Hello friends, welcome back. How's, How's it going? Guys? All right, we're gonna do another episode of what are you playing or what you playing? I don't remember exactly what we called it. Playing those same lines. What you play is technically what you put on there first. But, you know, she doesn't have an editor. So. I went to public school, it's fine. <laughs> you went to Montana public school. Burn. So why don't you start it off? What have you been playing on your Xbox? All right, Xbox. Am I turned on my Xbox recently? Not really, actually. I mean, we played a little bit of Neverwinter again. Yep, okay. we played a little bit more of Neverwinter. Yeah. We're going to dive into more Divinity this afternoon because... Yep. That's probably the, one of the best co-op games out there. It's so much fun. Like, I love the turn-based uh, aspect of it. I love the... Um, the way we have to think, the strategy, the throwing oil barrels and just yeah. wrecking our lives and mm. setting me on fire, that's a normal thing. It is. It's actually a lot of fun. Yeah. So, that being said, uh, I'm not really turned on my Xbox much, but I, I've been kind of in this weird lull where I want to play a game, but I don't know what game, and then I pick up a game, and it, then I don't this, play. this time of the year, it's definitely a lot of, uh, a lot of, not indie titles, but like a lot of double A titles. So there's never there's not a lot of major titles right now. We are getting close to that aspect of it. So oh, still amazing titles uh, coming out though. Yeah. Uh, I booted up an old comfort game of mine, Final Fantasy X, on the PlayStation Four. Classic, A plus, ten out of ten. Always recommend. It's not the best Final Fantasy, but it is one of my favorite Final Fantasies. That's a good one. I remember buying that uh, on my PS2 when I got my PS2 from Costco. Oh. Uh, actually, that game has been across every console so far. Yeah, it has. Lord. Uh, four generations now? Because it's going to be playable PS2, on the PS5. PS3, Vita, and PS4, and then 5. But you won't get the upgrades, so... But not that they're going to do an upgrade for it. It definitely shows its age, but it's a game... Unless I that's think. not 1% that doesn't work. Don't say that. Don't do no, that to no. me. Or fake wood or whatever this desk is made of. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, so yeah, I've just been playing Comfort Games Final Fantasy X. Um... I've discovered I'm very bad at COD. That was fun though. That was a blast. It was definitely rusty. I hadn't played a COD multiplayer in years. Yeah, probably since Ghost. Yeah. Ghost, I think it was the last one I majorly played. So it was weird because like that's that was my bread and butter for a long time was playing COD online with my friends. Yeah, when I first met you, that's what you did. You oh. booted up. Um, so yeah, we hopped on some multiplayer on COD Black Ops Four with our friend. So I, I personally had a blast playing it. No matter how bad I was, I learned the maps. I'm still learning the weapons. I'll definitely, I'm gonna start playing more of it. Yeah, so I'm what excited to see uh, see how Cold War is gonna do because that's my, yeah. that's probably one of my favorite uh, branches of the Call of Duty, is the Black Ops series. Okay. So uh, again, playing multiplayer Black Ops with you, which is fun. Um, the Xbox, I uh, restarted another game of Wasteland Three because there are a couple achievements I missed and playing a little harder difficulty, which is. Definitely a harder difficulty, which is kind of nice. Um, is there New Game Plus? No. Oh, okay. Once you, once you start over, you start over. That's so. shitty. Uh, honestly, it'd be okay, though, because, like, with that game, I was stupid powered at the end anyways, so much less having a New Game Plus would be insane. Um, what am I else am I playing? Uh, restarted. No, no, I restarted. Just starting back up on Avengers. Might as well wrap that. I'm really digging the story, too. Um, I like the fact that it's an Avengers game, but you're not playing as the Avengers right away. Um... And the fact that they have Kamala Khan in there, a young girl of color, is really nice. Kind of an, a new, not a new spin, I guess technically, but a a spin where it's not you're just you're not you're not the white superhero again. You're not you're not Cap. You're not Tony Stark. You're not this. You are this young girl who's put in a situation that you know she was never meant to be in, and she's kind of growing into herself, which is really cool aspect of it. I like it. So, And that's a new feature when it comes to the Avengers stories, right? Because yeah. I've just watched him play it. I personally haven't played it, but I've had I've had a lot of people ask me about it. Um, also, a weird question. Is it a games for service? Is it a game of service? Games yeah, service? it's going to be a games for service or games uh, service. Game service. Um, so you'll beat the main campaign, and then similar to what Destiny does with their strikes, you get strike missions and this, and that's where you'll get to choose which Avenger or which superhero you want to do. Because um, right now we've got Kamala, Iron Man, uh, Captain America, Hulk, and Black Widow. I want to uh, say on um, the plus Black plus new ones I am playing on the PlayStation. So I'll get Spider Man um, this spring. Uh, we know there's a couple of uh, versions of uh, Hawkeye coming up, which would be cool. 
So that'll be nice. And then there's a buttload of other characters that data mine, which we're probably going to get into those aspects of it. But yeah, as, as a game as a service, you're going to have to replay these missions to get the better chance of the gear drops. It's quite similar to Destiny. And that's, this is where I'm a little worried about the game. Uh, while it is fun, is like, is there going to be enough from Square Enix um, and Eidos that it can contain, um, excuse me, maintain, you know, the kind of drive forward to kind of keep playing the game. So, I mean, Destiny Bungie's done it, and if Bungie can do it, no offense, don't. Hmm. Bungie definitely had some missteps, though, at they first. They did, so and I hope see. other games yeah. and service have learned yeah, from that. We'll Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, you're, no, you're good. That's why we have discussions. Um, Xbox, it. like I said, Wasteland, um, started up with some No Man's Sky. Because the updates that they did with that thing uh, have definitely that made, launch. yeah, they've definitely made a lot of really good improvements. Kind of like what they promised that game was going to be at launch, and it definitely fell flat. It was still a fun game at launch, but it's it not a lot to keep you occupied. Now it is that that true sandbox to infinity kind of you know exploration, which is fun. See, and I am that person when a game comes out at launch and it flops, I have such a hard time jumping back into it because I've already paid $60 for this game and I know I should. But there is, there's such a disconnect then because they promised so much for this game and it's come, what, three years later now? Yeah. Uh, the other game that I've been playing on Xbox, started playing it well, when it came out in, what, 2018? Um, Shadow yeah. of the Tomb Raider. It's a few years old. It was a great game. For some reason, just stopped playing. I think other stuff could come back to it. And I was like, you know what? I kind of want to pick this up. Um, still fun, still great action platformer, uh, probably because it was playing Marvel, because it was like, oh, it's kind of the same company. Um, definitely buggy, Square Enix, fix your shit, it's been two years. Please, like, there's no reason you shouldn't have been able to fix some of these great game makers. Especially because um, it was a AAA title. Yeah. Like, it shouldn't, you shouldn't have that, uh, so kind of give you quick references to what we're talking about. Um, what, what was that quest you were doing? Uh, speaking of the dead, the problem was the dead dude, dead dude didn't bother showing up, so I had a cutscene where Alara was talking to herself like a maniac. Um, since that happened, and it subsequently auto-saved, that quest broke. Uh, I went and did everything else, but now I can't go back and talk to the dude to get the reward. So I can't 100% this game, if I was trying to, not that I am, but it's still annoying when a quest like that. So, not that I can 100% this game now, because I wasn't really trying to, thankfully, but it's kind of an annoying when something like that has been reported, I went and went online and looked, and it's like the last person to talk about it was like 400 days ago. So it's like it's been a thing for a while now. Um, it's where it just didn't take the time to fix it. Fix your shit. Yep. So Let unfortunately, your developers do their job. It won't at this point in time, but it is what it is. Um, the other big <coughs> my turn. Uh, the other big thing I've been playing is I picked up 3D All Stars yeah. on the Switch. I mean, this has been a blast. I started with Super Mario 64. Because that was my childhood. I remember getting that, uh, getting the 64 for Christmas one year uh, at my grandparents' house. Um, you know, parents doing their, you know, parents and grandparents doing their thing, cooking dinner, drinking, because it's Christmas, you drink after Christmas when you're an adult. Calories apparently. don't count on Christmas. Uh, and sent us downstairs to hook it up to the big screen and start playing. So that was one of the first games we threw in there and absolutely fell in love. And this just brings the nostalgia feels back to it. So it's kind of cool. Um, a little janky. Uh, it's definitely not a a title that is comparable in today's standards with like fluidity of camera movement and stuff like that. But it's still fun. I still remember a lot of the the OG tricks to to start getting into the game. Uh, I'm really excited to bite into Mario Sunshine and Mario Galaxy. We did play some Mario Galaxy on the Wii. Um, it's one of the best rated games on Metacritic of all time for a very good reason. Sunshine I never got into because my little brother. Uh, had the GameCube and it was kind of a prick because it wouldn't let a lot of us touch it. So it's all right. I had my PlayStation, my Xbox at that time. So I had PlayStation, I guess. I got the Xbox. I, I wasn't there. Um, but I had my other consoles. So it is what it is. Right. And I never got into Sunshine. Um, I think I played it at a friend's house on the GameCube and it just wasn't my jam. But I do remember picking up or playing Galaxy on the Wii and that game was an absolute blast. Yep. Like, I remember having so much fun with it. And then, of course, I have memories with this, with Mario 64. I don't know any gamer that hasn't at some point in time picked up that game. So it's just kind of iconic. Yeah. Um, did you throw the penguin off? I haven't gotten to that point yet. I'm still, I'm probably about an hour in. 
I'm trying to knock out the first door that you get into because there's like six or seven stars in there. So I'm trying to kind of knock all those out, just kind of go through the worlds as. Um, but as a kid, yes, <laughs> I did. And then I kicked myself because like you have to turn the penguin in to get one of the stars and you're like, son of a bitch. But Probably not as a kid, but I was like, oh. The game lets you do it. Yeah, the game definitely lets you do it. Okay, penguin. Bye. Hope you fly. Oh, wait, no, you can't. Never <laughs> okay, mind. Okay, bye. So, yep, that's what, that's definitely what I've been playing. Is there anything coming out that you're looking forward to playing? Not necessarily coming out that I'm looking forward to playing. Obviously, Cyberpunk's on my list. But um, as you know, I kind of dug into a weird JRPG that you picked up from your place of work uh, a few weeks ago. And it came out in 2015, and it totally flew under the radar. Yeah. And it's called... It, Exists Archive, right? That, yeah, Exists, Exists Archive. Yeah, Exists Archive. And it's it's a side-scroller, turn-based JRPG, and it follows the story of 12 different youths, is what they call them, so 12 different teenagers, young adults, and they die in modern-day Tokyo, and they end up in this weird, alter, not alternate reality, but this different dimension that's kind of like the afterlife. And I'm not, I'm only about two, two or three hours into it, and the art style is absolutely vibrant. It's colorful. It's. It was a gorgeous looking game. It is a gorgeous looking game, but man, am I fucking confused. <laughs> yeah, there was like, I was watching you play a little bit. There's no tutorial at all, was there? There is not, which was frustrating at first, but it's kind of a button masher, which is weird to say for a turn based game. But like, you button mash square a lot, and it's not super intuitive, which I think is why it flew under the radar. But other than that, I'm really curious to see where the story goes. So hopefully I can come at you guys with a full review because this game has three different endings. So it's definitely going to have replay value. Nice. Yeah, other than that, I mean, just like I said, Final Fantasy X, I love the characters. I have to say Lulu and Yuna are probably some of my female, my favorite females in the video, in the PlayStation world. I They're, they're just fantastic characters. Very yeah. well written, very well portrayed. Two different personalities. Yeah, no, for sure. Like, it, that's a great game. Like, like I said, I remember, you know, buying it on that. The PS2 for the PS2. I guess I didn't buy it on the PS2. Yeah. Um, when I got my PS2 for my birthday in Costco. Yeah, that was a long time ago. Very that long was a long time ago. Because I had a big fatty one too. 2000. 2000? 2001? No, uh, so it came out in 01. Oh, 2000. So I probably got it in 01, I would yeah. assume. Like an early one. Middle one, I guess, because April. We'll probably have to do a video on the what got us in the gaming. Yeah, that'd be a good one. That would be fun. Um, but so we haven't been really playing a lot just because we're anticipating so many games like Cyberpunk's coming out. Yeah. This oh, is crazy. We're so, um, the PlayStation, the Xbox got announced and that whole pre-order was an absolute shit show. But I mean, Xbox did it best. I mean, I'll give them that. They, they both had their advantages. Like Xbox was at least people knew when to get there. Um, I mean, I had, you know, customers lining up at midnight, which is insane. for Especially where we live. Yeah. Um, the good advantage with PlayStation, though, is scalpers couldn't get them. Like Walmart, they beat Walmart the bots. definitely screwed the pooch, but it beat and made everybody beat the bots, which is nice. So, um, why am I blinking? What other? There's so many Ratchet and Clank should be coming out this holiday season, I'm, and I'm gonna within the that window, series. so maybe springtime potentially. Oh, okay. Um, but but yes, yes, yeah, soon. I'm honestly biting at the bit for that Cyberpunk. Yeah, I'm yeah, very got excited. Like, CDPR. Uh, we're getting both the Xbox and the PlayStation, so both of those get the day one upgrade for the next gen consoles, which yep. would be good. And then we'll pick up on PC as well when when it goes when we get that PC. Uh, when it's not under construction. Yeah. <laughs> Pandemics made it hard to get parts, and that's no excuse. We're working on it. But that's what we've been playing. Um, what have you been playing? Drop it in the comments if you're going to go and replay any of the games that I was talking about, or if you're interested to hear what Jet's been playing or Jet's thoughts. Or if you've got something you think we should play. We've got an indie gem or something like that. So I do love indie games. Untitled Goose Game came to um, Game Pass. Game Pass, and you get to play as a goose, and it's co-op, and you can wreak havoc. Yeah. Ah. Thank you guys for joining. You have a wonderful day. Stay safe out there. Bye. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.